Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Fight Talk. I've got a very special guest with me for this time and it's going to be no other than Echo Fox's Julio Fuentes and hopefully I didn't some justice with that name, I didn't mess it up like I've done previously. No, yeah, there's, there's Julio, Julio and Julio. So <laughs> it's got that. I like, I like that last one's like the elite level. Yeah, the elite level. <laughs> yep, yep, that's the best way to do it. You'll impress me. If anyone calls me that name, you, with that pronunciation, I would just look at them like, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> that's like some secret art to that. So you see, if someone goes to an event now and sees you, that's what they've got. That's what they've got to aim for. Yeah. Like if I go to a Mexico tournament. Yeah. Yeah. They'll just literally call me that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like standard. Julio. 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 <laughs> It's cool. Okay, so what I wanted to get into is we're going to cover pretty much your career to start, your beginnings, get to know you a bit more. So what was family life like for you? What was the beginnings like for you? How did you get to where you are now? Yeah, uh, like I said, I, I had a pretty comfortable uh, upbringing. Um, parents came here as immigrants, but they got the paperwork done really easily. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I went to Spanish-speaking only school until I was eight years old. Went to the other town, learned English, uh, <laughs> went to college. Uh, I did film for as my major, and I got really depressed doing it. But um, you know, I was I was on the audiophile side, so I was doing sound design stuff. Okay. So like, I'm a little bit of an audiophile, but um, I dropped out with like a semester left, and and uh, I wanted to pursue other interests, and I started pursuing co co programming, computer science stuff. And uh, eventually found my way my way to like a front end developer job, and then eventually Echo Fox came into the picture. Yeah. And they, and then now I'm just riding the Echo Fox boat. Like I'm just on that right now. Still, <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. So computer science and Street Fighter were your parents questioning this decision to follow the Echo Fox Street Fighter dream over such like a <laughs> not an easy that's not an easy thing to learn. <laughs> you know it's crazy like. Uh, they still think I'm I'm working as a programmer right now in San Francisco. What? what? Yeah, yeah, swear to God. Okay, we best hope they don't see this. Yeah, yeah, no, they're not gonna. There's no way in hell. They're just they they know how to, they they knew how to use YouTube, but they don't. You know, it's kind of yeah. funny. But yeah, they still think I'm working at uh, San Francisco, and oddly, for some reason, I feel very okay with just keeping it that way. Because like I don't want to stress them out. Because to them, in their heads, no matter how much I tell them like gaming career, it yeah. just won't. It just doesn't. For Salvadorian parents, it just does not click. That's what I was going to say because, like, most people, like, I had a hard enough time when I was saying about playing and getting involved in gaming. And, like, your family, being the fact obviously they've come over here, I'm guessing they're going to be very work motivated, that side of things. They'd probably look really down on that, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. My mom, I show my mom, like, Christians at gaming events and stuff. And I'm like, see, it's like a lot of people and stuff. She's like, yeah. be careful. You can get hurt. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, but. Oh, okay, it just doesn't register. It just doesn't yeah. register, so it's okay. I, I'm told, but like you know, I, I figured like um, the the E League stuff happened recently, so I was gonna try to show them that. But like, I don't know. I just, I'm just too lazy to get the recording off the TV <laughs> and just show it to them. Like, but just show them the Twitch highlights. Get it on your phone. Go do it that way. No, they don't know how to do that. I gotta go back to the house and like, show it to them. But like, <laughs> if I do it, like if it's not coming out of the TV, they're yeah. not gonna get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, true, true. They're going to be like, oh, it's just your thing you're doing. Yeah, it's you just, just, you so just made that happen. It's so crazy to make them, like, realize it. But it's okay. Like, right now, like, they're happy, I'm happy. And uh, it's just, gonna keep, I'm going to keep it that way. I've got to ask, are you yeah. ever going to tell them? Uh, no, I'm never. I, I To be honest, if I, I don't think I'm going to tell them that I stopped working full time. Like, oh, wow. Like, wow. <laughs> no way. Just no way. I'll be so stressed out. <laughs> they're going to start calling me all the time. And then they're just going to be like, oh, you're not busy now, huh? Come help out your sisters. Come translate this. Come translate yeah. that. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just like, no, no, no. I'm good. I, lo I love it just the way it is right now. Well, well, you're doing well anyway, regardless of what they know. You're on Echo yeah. Fox. You're playing well. Like, it's it's going well. You can't complain at that point. But let, let's come back then to, you You said something about the laundry mat gaming is where you started off for a bit of fighting games activity. Tell me some more about that. How did this come about? Is this your first kind of taste of the gaming world yeah i mean if we're, if we're talking like the very beginning like yeah. we're talking season zero you know <laughs> like it had to be the laundromat days back when my mom would because we live right next to the laundromat so she goes she goes to do laundry i had to do i had to kill time somehow they had a next to yeah. street fighter cabinet and uh, i was always on that and 
you know, later as I grew up, I was into fighting games. I'm just trying to think like, wait, why am I even into fighting games? Like, why? It's like, <laughs> it must have been from X-Men versus Street Fighter at the laundromat, you know? Yeah, psychological. So, um, You're playing all that time is it embedded in your brain. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's crazy. And like, um, uh, what do you call it? It's crazy. Like, even when I was in elementary school, I was in the sixth grade. Like, I, I will never forget my first air combo uh, on, the, <laughs> on Marvel vs. Capcom 1, you know? So, like, it was, I think by sixth grade, I knew for sure fighting games was going to be like my thing so, so were, you, were cool. you naturally good at it did you have people train you or like did you learn from people there how did that work for you oh yeah no in the beginning no dude nobody ever really <laughs> thought, like yeah i was i was real scrubby for a long time to be honest and uh i don't know i just didn't mind because i loved it so much so i'm just mm. like okay i'm just gonna do my own thing you know um but uh you know even when the when the games got emulated on the PC, I started doing yeah. that in middle school. So I started playing on the emulator, started playing on my keyboard. And I was just like in love with it. And uh, I wasn't in the scene at the time. So like, I was just playing online on Kyera servers. They're so bad. But I wasn't like trying to like, oh, like what combos do I do? What do I do this? I was just yeah. like, doing whatever I wanted. You were enjoying it. You were you were doing what kids do, enjoy the yeah, game and playing. Just being a kid with the game, yeah. yeah. Win or lose, I just want to do stuff. It's pretty fun. Okay, so where did it change then? Where did you go from being that kid playing and enjoying it? And where did you go to starting to get into the FGC community? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's basically, I mean, Third Strike was my first real competitive game. Mm -hmm. So um, one day I just, well, basically um, it got emulated on, CPS3 got emulated on, on computers. And like I knew, I watched a video of a third strike like uh, Yoon combo. Yeah. And it was just like the timing was perfect. I was like, dude, like I can try this combo out myself. Like I want to play that character Yoon. He's so flashy. The custom Ganesian combos and stuff like that. So I downloaded the emulator, and at the time it wasn't even emulated correctly. It was just like rainbow pixels everywhere. You could only see rainbow <laughs> silhouettes. It was so bad, but the game was there, and I was just amazed. I was like, dude, they've only emulated CPS2 up until this point. How the... I can't... This is a miracle. So I was just so happy, and then uh, I eventually transitioned into going to the arcade at Melpita's Golf Line, okay. and I started getting rides there. And at this time, when I started getting rides, it was like 2006. Yeah. So it must have been 16 or 15 15 16 i don't know and then uh, that's when i really discovered the scene like I, I played a dude for the first time human opponent for the first time yeah and i would never forget that either the sakuma play <laughs> just kept doing the the spinning kick spinning kick spinning kick spinning kick spinning kick this in third strike akuma spinning kick is pretty cheap yeah. so that's literally what absorbed me and then it just keeps going from there and then i, I went to the better arcade yeah. with the stronger competition and then I started, and by 2007, I was, like, playing this game for real, for real. And, like, I had some people, I had people teaching me. Uh, this guy picked, this guy, like, scooped me up as his apprentice, kind of started giving, taking me around the scene. I met John Choi. I met, like, uh, Ricky Ortiz, Jimmy Chan. I started meeting all the really strong fighting game players. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is the world. This is it. This is crazy. And this is so much fun. So and it just took off from there, dude. And here I am. <laughs> so... From what you're telling me so far, the computer science, how you like were so into oh. the game, you were finding all the technical stuff out kind of on your own to almost begin with. Now, you seem very switched on and also very passionate about it. Do you think that's helped you kind of push yourself into this situation or did you kind of just fall into it? Because a lot of people always wonder like, how did you go into being involved in like the proper competitive seat? Like you said, you met these people, but what, what, how did you make that happen? Did it have to be like you got introduced or did they spot you? What was the situation? Oh, okay. Wait, you, you mentioned computer science. Like, how did I use that? Or, or are you talking about like in the very beginning? Like, so when you said you got the apprentice, he kind of like took you, took you under his wing and was like showing oh, you yeah. things and you met all the other guys. Like, how did that kind of unfold for you? Because that's, oh. I guess, what a lot of people would dream about. Oh, yeah, it wasn't, like, it's crazy because, like, the guy, he wasn't really, like, even, like, a top, top player. He was just really cool and, and chill with everybody else. But he's still a strong player nonetheless. Mm. And he knew all the other strong players. And um, it was cool. It was just because, like, he saw me as, like, a little brother. It was really, and he saw how passionate I was. He's like, you know what, you're worth investing into. So he would start coming to, he would come over to my house, and uh, he would train me in, like, my garage, you know. And I, at that time, <laughs> I had this big wooden American stick. 
and uh, we were just learning on that. He's, he taught me like damage scaling. Yeah. Don't do too many moves. Do less moves. Optimize your damage. I started learning. It's crazy. And uh, but they were really. I think the the older players are just really happy to see a younger player come into the scene at the time because I came in at a time where like the scene was dying. You know, mm. uh, the arcade era was literally very. It was dark times. You know, like it's just it's been in 2007. There was no Street Fighter Four. Yeah. It's just been Third Strike and CVS Two, and it's and it was that's been out since what 1999 or something like that. So, well over an like, upgrade. <laughs> yeah, like I I call myself a, the last generation arcade baby. So um, I think they were really happy to see me because I remember he snuck me into a bar. The guy, his name was Gar John Garcia, and he the first day I met everything, it was like past midnight. The arcade closed, and he brought me to this Korean bar, which I was not supposed to be in. <laughs> and that's when I met everybody, and then like. Uh, I remember my friend Rom. He, at the time, he's like, "Yeah, I've seen you, kid. Like, you're 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 a lot of nature. Like, I'm nurture. I have to like train really hard, but you you just got it going on, man. You're yeah. nature, bro." I was like, "Oh shit, this is crazy." And then John Choi, the legend, was right there. Ricky and and everyone else. Um, it was cool, dude. It was so cool. But they were everybody was happy to see a newcomer. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I bet, especially like where so many more young people now they don't start off, they don't hit the arcades and stuff like that. So. I guess my next question for you is where did you go to the point where you started to go to tournaments? What tournaments did you first compete in? How did that kind of, like, where did you take that step up? Yeah, it's cool. It's interesting because uh, uh, I was competitive in Third Strike mm. in 07, and, but there was not a big tournament scene and I still had no car and stuff like that. So yeah. my first really big and only tournament for Third Strike was like um, the SoCal Regionals in 2008. And that was pretty interesting because, like, I, I road tripped with the guys at the arcade. They had to come over and convince my parents that it was safe and stuff like that. It was crazy. <laughs> and then, uh, and I did really well that tournament. I think I placed like just outside of top eight or something like that. It's oh wow! Weird. And for a first yeah, tournament, there's a lot of pressure on that. Yeah, but it's crazy. Like as a kid, like I just it's crazy. Like looking thinking back then, like I wasn't even feeling nervous. It was just weird. <laughs> like I was just playing all because I was doing stuff that like wasn't even optimal i was just doing flashy combos this that i just played my game it was really fun and uh once i got a taste of that major i just knew like i have to experience this again like yeah. i have to do this again like this is too fun because it was my first time experiencing like hanging out with the, the another region mm. you know i think i was socal people and that was an experience and there was like shit talk at the arcade i was like whoa <laughs> there's beef like this is crazy, like, what's going on? This is still so fun. So, okay, you just said about that, going to, like, the different arcades, the places, and obviously seeing the beef and that kind of thing. Explain that to someone like me who hasn't been in that, hasn't seen that, and all the other viewers out there. What is that like? What is that environment like? Yeah, you always hear how, like, the arcade era had, like, like, it got real in there, right? Yeah. And, like, it's pretty true, like... The, the the tournament I'm talking about, SoCal Regionals, there's this guy, like, oh, this Oro player from SoCal, man, he was just on the other side of the cabinet beating up this Ryu player. I don't know where the Ryu player was from, but he was just talking shit the entire time. <laughs> We're just like, damn, like, I it would suck to be that guy right there. I would I don't want to be that Ryu player right now because he's just getting roasted. It, like, it was crazy because um, I feel like it was way worse back before my time, like, closer to the 90s, you know? But there's yeah. still, like, uh, remain like there's still moments of like this like like just thuggery you know <laughs> and even i have a good story like when i started playing in the mopitas golf line days uh, i remember I, I was playing on the third strike cabinet and i saw this dude uh he got him he punched this guy on the tekken cabinet for he, he was getting thrown too much and dude like uh 10 minutes later like cops rolled through and arrested him what I'm like damn like this is <laughs> pretty real like holy crap like yeah so I, I saw a dude get arrested at the arcade it's pretty funny that is yeah see that that's unheard of that's crazy and yeah yeah and you and still then, wanted to like, be a part of that huh and you still wanted to be a part of that yeah it was too sad, dude. <laughs> it's like the drama sucks and the drama will suck anyone in yeah like the drama is just like mm, every you cannot deny that a little bit of drama makes things interesting so yeah it, it was it made it interesting it was like i went on the forums that day i'm like dude i saw someone get arrested oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you said about the socal tournament 
from there, what was kind of the next stages for you? How did it go? Did you just run around the tournament scene for a little bit? Or did you have a game plan in kind of how you were going to improve yourself and how you were going to keep getting better and, and attend more of these tournaments as you go in? Yeah, it was, it was interesting because, like, I was still at that point in 2008, I was a junior in high school, mm. and uh, Street Fighter 4 actually came out in the arcade. So, at that major that I was at, Street Fighter 4 was going on at the same time, but I wasn't a Street Fighter 4 player, I was a strictly yeah. a third string player. And then after that, was so I'm like, dude, I think I have to transition, I have to <laughs> play this new game. And uh, it was hard because, like, my character wasn't in it at the time, so like, but I did play because I knew I had to, yeah, and um. That's where it got interesting because here I am, a junior in high school. There's a new game, but it's only on the arcade, and there was only one place in Northern California that had the game. And that was San Jose State University, okay. which was actually it was funny. Like San Jose State University is the school I went to eventually, but they had an arcade. They <laughs> literally had an arcade, and it was like popping, like good competition. It was too good to be true, too good to be true. So I'll take I'll start taking the bus there, and uh, but it was it, it, it I didn't get too much experience in the early Street Fighter Four days because. Um, I didn't know when people played at that arcade. Mm. I later found out that they played dur strictly during lunchtime, but like you have to be a student to know that schedule. Yeah, to of course. Play players. So I would sometimes go to San Jose State University and there'd be nobody there to play Street Fighter 4. <laughs> but nonetheless, I started playing little by little. Yeah, but I didn't have access to competition. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, um, golf, I didn't get it right away. So for a big portion of it, I just didn't have access to it. And then school got a little harder. So between junior year and senior year, uh, my Street Fighter 4 game was progressing, but mm. it wasn't like skyrocketing, you know? I was just keeping it as a hobby. Like, yeah, not too much investment. Okay, so talk to me about the Wednesday uh, night fights, that the, the weeklies are going, because I know you went to a few of them. So oh, yeah. talk to me through that side of things. What, what, what went down there, and how did you first start like getting people's attention? Okay, so... Wednesday night fights was definitely uh oh well that that's in, that's six hours away from me that's in SoCal okay but um if we're talking to if we're going down the timeline here yeah I was at this point when I went to my first WNF I was already a Street Fighter four a fully fledged Street Fighter four player okay I was able to drive I'm in college now yeah um and uh. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I wanted to fight the other regions, and I did pretty good. I think every time I went down there, I'd either get second place or second place. Yeah, like I would do really good to be honest. And um, but I could never win. It's crazy. Like, I never had a W N F title. Oh, uh, never, never. I could. Ah. Yeah, I never took first place at the Street Fighter Four W N F. It's weird. But um, why do you think? Why well. do you think that was? Was it always the same person, or did you just like kind of stumble at the last hurdle? No, nah, it was literally like two different people each time. I actually didn't go that much, to be honest. In the Street Fighter Four days, I only went like because you got to you got to make a big trip at the yeah. time. I was still a student, but uh, yeah, I remember Velociraptor and Mark Teddy, and then yeah, it's weird. Like, and there's some someone else. I'm sure. I, I'm sure I've gone three times, but my memory's so blurry. <laughs> it's weird, but uh, I know for sure I did not win. Um, but yeah, I started going there, and that's like now at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah, I can definitely travel and i don't mind traveling at all to me i love cruising mm. so that six hour drive to socal was very enjoyable and i had my girlfriend with me at the time so she she made it a little better but um yeah yeah that that's that's that was a short chapter and then it was back to back to norcal after that okay so yeah. talk to me then the next steps what happened how did you kind of continue to progress yeah. because the thing for me is obviously you've changed mm -hmm. games you're now playing street fire for and obviously we've then gone on Street Fighter Five. How has this transition kept happening? Because you're A, really passionate, yeah. you obviously had the natural talent, but there's a lot of chances where you've got school and things going that could have affected your play or, or affected your ability. Yeah, uh, so it's crazy. Um, so this is where like my, my career really starts to actually go somewhere, right? So now mm. we're at the, we're what? Now we're at the end of Street Fighter Four, right? the ultra street fighter 4 is released right yep and at this point i have not stopped grinding at all <laughs> and i finally started seeing real true success like i was beating the uh, really top i started to win every local tournament in norcal i started being the really established players like ricky uh champ and them and um i started just getting some wins under my belt yeah so um 
it, and I was, and we had a weekly at the time. We had our own version of WNF. It was called the Folsom Street Foundry. Okay. It's crazy because this is not too long ago. I think this is like 2013 to 2015, 2016 or so. But I started going to these, and I started winning every single weekly. You know, and oh, wow. like with good players and the really strong players in that bracket every single time. So um, I got my name a little mid through that, and at the same time, I was able to get my job. Yep. Uh, so it was it was actually crazy because like I was working as a programmer in downtown San Francisco, and the Folsom Street Foundry was a San Francisco tournament. So every Thursday, I just get out of work, and I would just go to the venue. So it worked out a little. It worked out perfectly. So I was able to like work and compete. I mean, I get I go to work really tired the next day, but um, <laughs> it just it was too good to be true. Like I said, it's like wow. I I just walk forty minutes and I get there, and uh, um. Yeah, it was really awesome, and I started winning that, and then I was able to afford myself to go to more majors. But then by the time I did all that, Street Fighter Five was coming out, and yeah. I knew, like, okay, I got the job this time. This is a Street <laughs> Fighter game. This is the first Street Fighter game that's going to be released where I have resources, I have a car, I have money, and I have experience. So I just knew when Street Fighter Five dropped, I was going to go all in, and I went in a little too hard, and I fucked up my arm. But, like... <laughs> It was, it was so worth it, you know. It was so worth it. It was worth it. Okay, so let's let's look at this then. What actually happened between, obviously, you having a really good job, and then you deciding that you wanted to go ahead and kind of focus? Because obviously, we said you were a developer, you had a good career potentially, and all that building up. What made you go? Okay, I'm ready for this. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, like it's so funny. Like I literally got that job to pursue my hobby. So, oh wow so you, that was your game plan then that was my game plan yeah because in silicon valley man the programmers get paid so freaking well <laughs> like i was getting paid so well it was ridiculous i'm like damn like i, I, I like this is i could definitely travel i can yeah. definitely go to majors and stuff so uh when street fighter 5 the season started like a lot of those first few major tournaments i flew myself out to them and stuff like that Oh, wow. And, uh, so you were fully funded, which I guess a lot of people might struggle to do. But also, you yeah. were seriously motivated for it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because, like, at that point, I, like, you know, I never expected a sponsorship. I think it's mm. the best way to go about it. Like, you should always just assume it's going to be all you no matter what. Yeah. So I was really, like, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do this work life and Street Fighter thing. You know, I'm going to just do that. Well, actually, it, it got kind of interesting because um, I eventually, I did want to play Street Fighter Five. A little seriously and I found a different job where I could be a teacher at a boot camp so I just became a teacher at a boot camp I kind of downgraded but I, I gave myself way more time yeah you know so like so you uh, can focus on the game guess. I guess yeah because mm -hmm. you know in San Francisco I'd get home at like 9 p.m. and just, I just can't do that but this new job I got paid less I'm still in the same field but I'm getting like four to five six more hours in the days so it's just ridiculous so <laughs> uh, I optimize you got to optimize your situation That's what yeah I'm telling people. And um, and I just told myself, like, yeah, I could just do this. Like, I can work, live, and go to majors. So for me, I was pretty comfortable. I uh, grinded a lot. And then uh, I got some success in Street Fighter Five in the beginning. I got a good amount of success. But, dude, I, I went in. I, I'm, I'm yeah. all in or nothing kind of dude. But, yeah. No, you, you, de you know, I can, we can tell from this conversation that is, that is how you're, you're living this. So at this point, are we now up to, say, 2016? Yeah, this is definitely 2016. This is last okay. year. Okay, so last year, obviously, yeah. a lot of third place, a lot of second place. Yeah, mm -hmm. a couple of first places as well. You're mm -hmm. killing it with Ken. And yeah. what point did Echo Fox come into the situation and how did that come about? Because obviously, that's a massive, massive talking point. Considering you were self-funded yeah. as well, that's making mm -hmm. your life a hell of a lot better, I'm sure. And also the fact you were doing so well what's that yeah, change for you how's it come about Let, let's let's go through that yeah it's crazy um i remember the coolest part was that like i was so glad it's like you know first impressions are everything right mm. and uh they actually messaged me so i so what got me noticed is i won my first major in street fighter 5 right it was called texas showdown yeah i took it but coolest part was that they hit me up even before that oh they so they recognized you before the win Yes, they were recognized because I, I guess I got I got a big rep in NorCal for winning all the tournaments up there yep. in Street Fighter Five because I was winning like all of them 
in, in the very beginning. So but that's brilliant this, because like, a lot of teams don't actually like they wait for the win and then they pick the player. So the fact that I guess for you that they were noticing you beforehand shows how invested they were into like the scene. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like, uh, Shuriken Forms had this ranking, so they kept track of like local and like semi regional tournaments. Yeah. And the, and I was like really up there. I was like top three or something. I was just up there for a good bit. And it's funny because like this ranking system doesn't represent the best players in the world. It just happens to be like they were just keeping track of my tournaments and like uh, several other top players' tournaments, right? So like yeah. my name showed up, and I, was, I guess I was kind of lucky. But um, it was crazy. I remember the CEO of Echo Fox, Jace Hall, he tweeted out. Like, oh, we're trying to start a fighting game division. And, like, mm. everybody just put in their names. And all the top players just, like, yo, hit me up. Like, oh, me, 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 Yeah. Me. And, like, I didn't even know about that tweet. Oh, so you didn't like, put yourself forward. Yeah, I didn't put myself forward, right? And, like, <laughs> here, one day I just get a, a message from him. And he's like, DM me, please. And I'm like, what? Like, what is going on? What is Echo Fox? Oh, frick, everybody wants in. Like, yeah. this must be good. And then um, I told him. He's like, he wanted to talk, the negotiations. And then I told him, like, you know what? I'm at Texas Showdown right now. Can we talk after the tournament? Because I'm really focused. I'm about to go to top 32. Yeah. And I just really want to focus on my game. And then I end up winning. And then I'm just like, yo, you want to talk? Like, you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, that's what I'm saying. That first impression, I'm like, dude, this must look super good. Did, did that like, help your motivation? Before, and then I win. Yeah, that. So, so did that help your motivation for the event, knowing that they were looking, or did you literally block it out and kind of focus straight on your skills? Oh yeah, I blocked it out. I, okay. Uh, so you, you didn't get big headed from it or anything. You know, some players be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm wanted by a team," and then they're gonna kind of go for it. Yeah, no, I, it was because to me, it was like, "This is just a, a DM. This is just a yeah. private message. Just whatever, throw it away." And uh, it helped me, and I focused, and uh, I was able to. It, it, I felt good coming to that negotiation afterwards. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm interested, you know. But it's crazy. Like, they picked me up. Yeah, that, Super blessed. That is, that is an awesome story of how it worked. But did you also maybe have any other teams that are looking to kind of get onto you off the back of that win? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, was, I was getting up. up uh, like, I call them like uh, soft sponsorships, yeah. you know. Or, or people could call them like tier three, tier two, whatever, but like some tier three, some tier two sponsors. But uh, Echo Fox was the tier one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was getting a lot of, I was getting handled by a lot of people, but I'm just like, no, nah, like it's just like, I know what I deserve. Mm -hmm. So I'll just keep working. You know, I'm like, for me, it was just like, I'm going to keep working until I hit gold. Like, I have no problems with that because I'm going to play the game forever. I'm literally going to play the game forever. So there's no rush, there's no deadline, you know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just wait for the gold, you know? Like, uh, so I wasn't in any rush to get uh, any of those sponsors, to be honest. But Echo Fox is worth it, so I had to take it. I had to take it. Oh, well, it definitely seems worth it, but how does that affect you now in terms of, say, pressure? Do you, do you feel more responsibility, more pressure on kind of your obligation to do well, or do you still play the same game? Because you come off confident, you're definitely got yeah. the passion and the motivation, but often some people can get hit up by a big team and be thrown off their game almost because of it. Yeah, it's crazy because like uh, after they hit me up, I played even better. It's pretty cool. I was just <laughs> like, yeah, like I got this uniform on now. I got superpowers. Like I'm the shit. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck people up, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I, because they had some pretty strict demands on me in mm. terms of like. I had to place and like I, I met up to those expectations so like I was just like yeah I'm doing something right you know um, yeah the pressure was there but like it wasn't any different from the pressure I felt before you know yeah it was just the same pressure so I was like yeah I'm nervous sure but like the the, the shirt the, the, the Echo Fox shirt doesn't make me more nervous as I was before you know so it's the, it, yeah, it's the same deal yeah and plus I had a lot of confidence too because uh I just knew at the time that nobody played the game more than me, you know? Mm. I just knew that, like, I know I'm the guy that grinded this game out the hardest. I've seen everything, blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, so I had a good amount of confidence. So it, it, it helped me uh, help me perform. Now it's a little different. Now it's just like, man, my, I haven't been grinding at all. My confidence is low, but, like, I can handle the pressure. So it's weird. But at the time, the confidence definitely helped me out. Okay, so that, that's, that brings me on to my next point almost. So you're saying about, obviously, now 
you're not playing as much. So what is what is kind of your day-to-day schedule? What's the life of you on a daily basis on how it works for playing Street Fighter, your practice, kind of who you're practicing with? What's, what's a day in the life? Well, man, it's a... Uh... I started playing Street Fighter again a month ago. Okay. And uh, before that, it was a three to four month break. Um, and what, I think what, was, what was the break for? Um, basically, like, and uh, you know, when Street Fighter Five came out, I had this. I already had an existing arm injury. Yeah. Um, I've had it for like now two and a half years. It, it popped up in the Street Fighter Four days. It's just like you know, your tendon aching overuse. You know. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. So like repetitive but, strain yeah. almost. Yeah, like repetitive stress injury, mm. kind of. I just have like extreme tendonitis, think of it that way, right? But yeah. when it popped up, it's really easy to ignore these uh, signals because, like, you feel a little bit of pain, but if you warm up, you play a few games, it, the pain disappears, you know? Yeah. So when this problem came up in the Street Fighter 4 days, I'm like, okay, no problem. Warm, play three games, it's done. And then it, as months went by, I had to play 10 games to warm up and get rid of the pain. And yeah. I would keep doing that. And I just kept doing this, like, pushing, you know, like, pushing away, like, uh, you know, like, I didn't address the problem. I just kept temporarily addressing it. And it eventually caught up to me last year, like halfway through the season last year. And like, it was really hard to start to keep grinding. I just couldn't do it. It was too painful. And, was uh, that hard for you? Because I know like gamers who take that, like you're, you're taking this seriously. You're practicing. You're wanting to be the best. And to have something yeah. you can do nothing about and you, you're going to have to take that break. What did that feel like? It's really heartbreaking, man. And like, even to this day, like I'm just like looking out the window. I'm like, Dude, like, why did this happen to me? You know. Mm. Um, but it, it, you know, I I always had, it and I was able to like keep it under bay. But yeah. because I went in so hard at, at Street Fighter Five, like it really just pushed the injury to the limit. And like, it's kind of interesting. Like, just imagine this. Like one day, just we're having a regular session and my arm's hurting like usual i'm like okay let's just warm it up let's do this again and yeah. the pain will disappear and it just wasn't disappearing i played three games and i just couldn't do it and i'm just like i'm done this is it like like i felt like crying dude because it was just like i could not run away from this injury yeah and yeah it's kind of it was really sad and then capcom cup was coming up too capcom cup is a big tournament it's a big prestigious tournament and i did not train at all for it because the I, I cared more about my arm yeah know? of course and uh because like to me like like i said there's no rush there's no deadline like i'm gonna i know i'm gonna play the game forever mm. so i was very happy with like saying to my sponsors like i'm not gonna play this game um like my arm is way more important because i love this game and i know how i want to play i want to play with a really healthy arm so before capcom cup came up like it was really hard to train like i trained for like a like my routine is basically this: I would go to the champs house, F champs house, yeah, and I would play like three sets, like just three first to threes, and then mm-hmm. I would go home. That's the best I could do, and I only did that for like once every like week or so. It was just really like you could barely even call it training, you know? Yeah. So it was in November is when I really stopped playing this game last November, and then as soon as Capcom Cup ended, I did not touch it at one bit up until last month, so January, February, March. So March, March until April, I started playing again. So what is that? November, December, January, February. Yeah, it's like four months almost. Yeah, and it's still hurt. You know what's crazy? Is that it hurts? Mm. It, even when I was resting and not playing the game, it was still hurting all the time, like using my phone, using, doing any activity with it. But after that four-month rest period, I started playing again a month ago, and the pain disappears. It's just crazy. It's just like, how so, I don't get this injury. Did, did you have an but operation, then, or did you have anything to fix it, or was it literally just break? Uh, no, I mean, I had an MRI. They looked inside of it. It's yeah. just, like, really, it's a big inflammatory thing, you know? Yeah. If you looked at my MRI, you just see, like, the tendon, and then the doctor's like, yeah, you see all that white stuff around there? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, that, that stuff was the inflammatory fluid. <laughs> You're gonna need it's pretty messy you need a year to heal this up what? or or you can do uh six months and then we can consider the cortisone shot so and this diagnosis was uh in february yeah you know? so it was really serious damage and i was not surprised dude like i had this pain and i just kept pushing through it because i'm like i need to play a street fighter fuck it <laughs> like um 
So it was like people don't believe it, but like I did some real serious damage, man. Like like I said, this yeah. has been a two and a half year injury. You know, it's just only I, it's reached its limit and now. It's shown, you know, but and I guess yeah. have like are you looking at the long term, thinking okay, is this going to be a constant, or are you just looking at okay, I'm going to deal with it now and kind of fight it off, and maybe I'll have to take another break again. What what, what are you thinking about? Because to me, in the back of my mind, that would worry me like crazy. Yeah, it, it does worry me, man. And, like, I'm still, you know, my team's really supportive. They just tell me, like, it's okay, man. Like, just just stream other games. Yeah. And just do that for now, you know? Like, you don't have to play Street Fighter. And, like, I know I believe them and stuff, but it just, every day, it's, like, a big hole in my heart. Like, I could stream other games, but it just doesn't fulfill me like Street Fighter does, you know? Like, I'm not as passionate yes. as I am with Street Fighter. And so it's just, I'm, like so conflicted right now it's so much conflict like what i want i know what i want to do i know what i'm here to do but i have to do other stuff but like i still have that worrisome feeling like they're gonna let me go they're gonna let me go they're not gonna like let me go but it's just like i want to be playing i want to be doing work for them and i yeah. really can't because the bigger picture is more important so i'm never gonna feel bad about not playing so right now after i i came out recently to play for ely because mm. it was a tv opportunity you know yeah next I level do it <laughs> I was like, this is historic. Like, FGC goes to TV, and I got invited. Like, I know I'm injured right now, but I am going to be a part of that. Like, I have to show my parents that. Like, I have to <laughs> it's just too fucking sick. So I came out. I played, um, you know, starting a month ago, the pain disappears, which is good. You know, I'm like, oh, I guess I made some progress in healing. And it's kind of funny, like, at the end of the month, like, the pain comes back. It's just crazy. But I did heal. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, e-league is over now and it was really cool being active again because people are like watching my streams again people mm. care about me again i'm kind of relevant somewhat and but now it's like e-league is over and my plan is to go back to the cave dude it's i'm not going to touch this game at all because like this arm is way too important to me yeah it's just way 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 too important so um so no street fighter so you've said obviously you plan to play this game for the rest of your life it's what you want to do obviously you've done you've done elite for now but how long until we see you back active again on it like where are you going to kind of kind of go because what i what, what i guess kills you is the fact that you can't practice so you're probably not up to stand of what you think you are and you're probably looking at other people going I should be doing that. That should be me, like, top eight or yeah. top three. Or yeah. It's like, I know I can do that. So I'm just trying to get into your mentality on, like, what is keeping you hungry? What is keeping you going? Because you've still the support of Mega Fox, who obviously being amazing, but you're still in pain, and you've got to get past this. But yeah, yeah where, where, um, how are you seeing the timeline working? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to know how it's going to work out for you. I just have this, like, there's, I, just, I just have, like, um, I'm a really positive person, so... Mm. I just have this vision that, and this vision really pulls me, you know, it just gives me, gives me like that energy. Like, um, I see myself like coming back with like the arm, a really healthy, not painful arm and just destroying everybody, you know? Cause like, <laughs> I, I know how much I love the game, dude. And it's just like, um, basically it's just that, like, I just know I'm going to, I know I'm going to come back and do great, you know? Cause yeah. like, I know I'm passionate but the, like I said earlier, the bigger picture is, is more important. But um, it's weird. Like I'm really positive. Like I know, for, ideally for me, I just want to. I'm gonna. I want to wait these entire six to twelve months, however long it takes. Mm. And when I'm, because the thing is, like I, I, I hate going like um, half-ass. Like technically, right now, for example, like right now, I could play Street Fighter. Yeah. I could play for an hour. I could play for two hours. Right. I could play tomorrow. The the day after tomorrow, though this is going to start crying like yeah. crazy. And um, at that point, it's like, wow, I can't grind that day as hard as I want to. And then the day after that, if I even consider playing, it's going to be even worse and worse. So it's just like, I hate, I don't want to be this like, oh, like, do I want to play this year like with a mm. half-ass training regimen or do I want to go all in? And for me, I, like, I'm an all-in type of dude. So I'd so. rather I'll go all in on healing and then no gaming at all. And then I'm going to go all in on gaming when I am healed. So I don't like to do like half this, half that. Like I'm healing, but I'm playing at the same time. It's just not me. So my plan is go all in on healing. Yeah. And then come back with a freaking killer vengeance. <laughs> just, I swear to God, like, like I only envision myself winning majors again. 
Oh, and like man. everything I've always thought about in my head, I've, it's always come true. You know, yeah. I think about it every day, it always comes true. So I have a lot of faith, believe it or not. I have a lot of faith. Like uh, this has taught me a lot. It's pretty cool. Do, do you know, just, lot. just from speaking to you and like, obviously it's the first time we've spoken. I, I get that vibe from you. Like when you're telling me, yeah, I'm going to come back and do it. I've got that feeling like, okay, he, <laughs> he's, he's going to do really, it. Right? Yeah. yeah 100%. I, I, I feel it and it's the bottom of my heart, dude. It's just crazy. Like, I, I've, I've met Counter-Strike professionals, Dota, League of Legends, all these different games. Yeah. And none of them say that they're going to play this game for life. They say, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to go get a normal job. Or I'm going to do this and I'm moving to something else. Like you are that yeah. dedicated to the game. And it's just, for me as someone who's done this for years, it's the first time I've heard anyone speak to you that's so passionately like you. Like, that's crazy amounts yes. of dedication. Yeah, it, it, it's really easy for me, too, because it's just like, wow, I, I really like, uh, you know, people always complain about Street Fighter. Like, oh, I don't like this version of Street Fighter. It's <laughs> oh, yes, the forums. <laughs> offense, that is not this oriented. But for me, it's like, even though I, I played three iterations, the, the Third Strike, Street Fighter 4 and 5, but like, I, I've never, I've genuinely never even had a complaint in my mind. I'm just like, I could never complain about the game, no matter how broken it is. Like, mm. yeah, you have bad matches and stuff, but like ultimately, I just love it so much. I'm just like, I don't see anything wrong with this game. Like, I, I, it's weird. It baffles me that people even complain. I'm just like, dude, that's like, I just love the medium. Like, it's crazy. Like, you gotta just love the, the medium. It's a medium. It's just a, a medium to compete in. So it's, it's really weird. Like, I'm really in love with it. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I really love it. Like to the point where, like, I'm telling my tier one sponsor that I will not play for them until my arm heals because I love the game yeah. that I love it so much that I, I can tell them that in their eyes I don't think a lot of other people will probably do that but like uh, yeah like for me like I said earlier there's no rush there's no deadline I'm gonna play it for life so I know I'm always gonna be moving forward on the timeline you know so like success will come if it does you know <laughs> just, there's no rush there's no rush okay so obviously we now we're up to present day we know where you are Mm-hmm. You obviously you're not going to be playing Street Fighter, but are you still heading down to the events? Are you still keeping an eye on things? Are you still trying to keep yourself mentally there, like looking at the other players, seeing what they're doing? And like obviously you've been very dedicated to Ken, but is there anything that makes you think maybe you're looking at other stuff and going, oh, I might change character, or are you just staying dedicated? Like what goes on in your head? Because I know I watch games of like Counter Strike, and I'll be like, damn, I wish I was still playing competitively or something like that. Um, so I, I can imagine that's exactly how you're feeling and there's probably loads of thoughts running through your head. Yeah, um, it's weird, like, uh, I know I, I know it's important for me to, like, stay involved, so, like, I'll still go to local events just to be in the area, you yeah. know, so, like, I, even when I wasn't training in the last, like, four months, uh, I was still going to the locals just to see what's going on, you know, because, like, at the end of the day, like, I just want to hang out, too, these, guys, these people are my friends, you know, so, like, I'm still going to events and I'm still keeping in tune with the game, um, in terms of the other things that are on my mind, like it's really important that I keep my mind like on its toes. Yeah. So I've been trying like really hard to like how do I keep my mind fresh? How to keep the mind games up? You know. And I love that I have. First of all, I love that I have an amazing group of friends. Those are all really talented Street Fighter players, and they're down to play games like chess with me. You know, like I was a big <laughs> chess player back in elementary school. I was the president of the chess club. So like I'm. I'm now like uh, because I'm so experienced in Street Fighter. When I when my friends come over to play Street Fighter, we we play Street Fighter and chess. We do both, right? Yeah. And like I could play a game and flex my mind, you know. Like I literally flex my my this cortex right here, <laughs> and like I feel it. And I played Street Fighter so much that I see the parallels between chess and Street Fighter. And to me, like it makes a lot of sense, you know. It's just like you know this game is like, like I, even though I don't see all the parallels right away, I know there's like it's using the same muscle. That Street Fighter uses. I just yeah. know it's the same muscle. You know, it's like, like if you were lifting up, it's like, uh, say you're doing a bicep curl. You know, yeah. Like you lift up a dumbbell or you lift up a box, but you're still using the same muscle. You know, and that's what it feels like with chess and, and Street Fighter. It's like they're different games, but they're using the same muscle. And I feel like, if as long as I keep this fresh, um, I'll be good when I come back. You know. Yeah, it's being connected so, to it almost, isn't it? Yeah, because I gotta play some. I have to play some mind games, right? Like I can't just quit playing mind games. Like just because I'm injured doesn't mean I can't play mind games, right? Like yeah. So um, that's what's important for me. Like right in my, I'm always thinking like, okay, like uh, keep your mind games up and stay. Keep your brain fresh. Don't just like quit too hard. You know, like do something to like, you know, for example, if you if you're not gonna drive your car for a whole year, mm. you're at least gonna put it in a nice storage garage, right? Like, yeah. yeah. You know, clean it up every now and then. I don't know, but keep it in pristine condition, ready for it to go when you're ready. 
Yeah, keep, gotta keep like the core files still in check, you know. Yeah. So, gotta flex this still. So my plan, uh, I st- still be around the scene mm-hmm. and tr- find ways to keep my brain working, you know. Yeah. Just uh. So yeah, would you? Yes, they have a lot of brain cells, man, and we're running out of them. So <laughs> I have to really create them. I have to push to make these brain cells. We're working extra hard for it. So. Are we looking at maybe the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, that you make a return? Are we are we thinking that? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think by 2018, I'm definitely going to be um, up there because, like, the way I look at it is this way. So, like, ideally, this is the best scenario. I heal up. Let's say November, December comes around. Mm-hmm. I've, I've naturally healed up until this point. Um, here's the thing. They wanted me to take this whole year from February to December to heal up. Okay. However, he said... Six months could also work too. Yeah. And but you want to do the cortisone injection, so that's the other option. Six months with the cortisone injection, or just a whole year of healing. Mm. And I'm just like, how about I do a whole year of healing and I'll do the cortisone injection? You know, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> double strength. Yeah, double. Like I'll be fully healed and I'll get like this buffer of more healing. I don't know what the hell. I'm just so, imagining like, head, like some robotic Terminator style arm that you're going to be using when you come back. Now that's like that's what's going through my head. <laughs> so down. If they had like a mechanical fix for this, I would be like, just please put me in surgery. I'd be so down. But um, yeah, I, I, I see it in my vision. I see myself healing. I see myself taking some medical route with the either surgery or the injection. Mm. And I see myself grinding it out pretty hard in 2018. Uh, to be honest, actually, you know what's crazy? Um, like uh, I'm signing up for. So my ultimate plan too is at, I'm gonna I want to go to Japan at boot camp. If I do get signed up, oh, next awesome! Year, I want to go and boot camp with my teammates because like, mm. like if I'm gonna come back and I'm fully healed, like I want to just go back into the the the, the barracks. You know, I want to go back into the gym, hardcore. And I figured if I'm gonna do that, I should learn Japanese. Oh wow! And like become really fluent in it. And since I have so much free time now. Um, I'm gonna go to Japanese school. I just I talked to Daigo's translator. She <laughs> did, she told me about this really good school in San Francisco. So I'm gonna give myself more value. So you're and streaming least, and learning Japanese, ready to go hardcore and go to Japan. Have you ever been to Japan to train before? Yeah, I have. I went there for okay. two weeks uh, last August. Loved it, man. Oh man! So this is like go back, come back, fitter, stronger, mentally prepared, with a new yeah. arm almost to then come back and just take the world by storm. Yeah, that's the plan. Like, I, I don't see it happening any other way. Like, it has to it has to be that. It has to be that. And, like, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to make it happen. So, it's like, uh, I'm really excited. To be honest, like, I'm super excited to go to these classes because, like, I just want to give my brain something to do, you know? Yeah. It's really weird. Like, um, when Street Fighter is, like, your only source of fulfillment, it's it's really hard. It's harder to be happy. And, like, you know, before, because, like, if I, when I had a job, mm. if I would lose at a local or a tournament or regional, I, f- I still feel good about myself because, like, I have other things to be happy about, you know? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I got my girl, I got money, I got a car, whatever, right? Yeah. But now it's like, well, I'm only doing Street Fighter, and if I don't do well at that, like, how can I feel good about myself? So I'm just trying to find ways to feel good about myself right now. And I know uh, learning Japanese for the future, because I know I'm going to use it, is uh, is going to benefit me. So I'm pretty happy about this choice. And it's like really cheap tuition, too. It's like, it's like three-hour classes every Saturday, like... It's pretty cool, dude. I'm I'm super excited. Man, you you literally got it all figured out. Now, to kind of start closing this out, what I want to come to now is there's going to be a lot of gamers, especially now, I know this whole like eSports, FGC thing kind of that gets talked about. But what I'm looking at is more people have got their eyes on Street Fighter, more people are looking at the fighting games community. What advice would you give to people getting involved now um, across the world like and they're looking at you and they're thinking, this dude loves the game, he's pretty much living the dream, and they want to be in your shoes. What would your advice be? Oh, yeah. Um, I have, like, realistic advice, and then I have, like, that fantasy advice. But, yeah, realistic advice, get the job to put you in the environment to play the game, right? Because, mm. like, some people are always saying, like, oh, I don't live in a scene, I don't have a local scene. Yeah. You know what I would do if I lived in their shoes? I'd be like, I'm going to get a job in California or in Japan, so I can even pl- so I can even play this hobby. Like it's to me, it's very very simple. Mm. So like, I would do whatever it takes to put myself in the right environment to even to make it worth it. You know, because like if I lived in freaking Pakistan, <laughs> like I'm not gonna be like I'm gonna be a top player. Like no, like if I'm in Pakistan, I'm gonna be like, dude, I'm either gonna create a killer local scene 
and use the internet for resources, or I'm gonna bust my ass and move to a different region where I can get some legit training. Yeah. And I'm gonna find a job to do that. So yeah, get your job, support yourself. Don't expect the sponsorship. I think that's the best way to do it. Don't ever expect it. Just love the game, and just try to move forward. And like the great things will happen to you. You know, like you find the best girlfriends when you don't even expect them, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. At least in my experience, like that's. That's I can vouch thing. for that. I can vouch for that. Right. So the greatest things come unexpected. Just love it, do it, and support yourself. Yeah. And and assume there's no sponsorship coming your way. And Wise like words. That's the best. Yeah, that's the best way to do it because yeah, you, you don't want to. If you keep expecting it, you're not going to be happy. You know. So no. just assume it'll never come, and you'll never be sad. You're just always going to be happy. You know that'll help you progress. Julio, I've got a mad amount of respect for you from from doing this. I've learned so much. Um, firstly, like, where can people find you, and do you have a stream schedule? Like, let's look at that side of things. Where can people watch what you're doing? How how's things going? Or are you I'm just most, I'm gonna throw it on and just do it now? <laughs> like, I'm the most inconsistent streamer, I swear to God. But um, yeah, um, I have a Twitter, and it's super easy to follow me. It's just like my first and last name and my area code. I rep my area code pretty hard, so it's Julio Fuentes four hundred eight on Twitter. Yep. Instagram is Julio Fuentes four hundred eight. My Gmail is Julio Fuentes four hundred eight. Now it's just like, <laughs> like everything is Julio Fuentes four hundred eight. But you guys gotta follow me on um, Facebook. Um, mm. I have a page now. Oh, I'm awesome! Supposed to be like beefing up, you know. So it's like facebook.com slash fox dot Julio Fuentes. Yeah. And that's where I stream a lot on Facebook now. Um, cool. The whole team is streaming on Facebook. Facebook is the future. Yeah, yeah. For esports, they got plans, you know, and uh, we're trying to get ahead of the game. So well, Facebook streams are the new thing. Yeah, and you, yeah. you connect with all like, the people you know and stuff. And what we'll do is obviously, guys, in the description below, you will be able to see all of this. So have a look. I'll put links to all of Julio's stuff so you can go find him or follow yeah. him. Yeah, follow me. And I have a Twitch channel too. It's twitch.tv under, uh, and then Julio underscore the Ken. Easy, oh, okay. Easy. You changed easy it up to Twitch then. <laughs> yeah, I made it so long ago that it's just like, I'll just keep it that way. But uh, yeah, that's that's it's easy to find me, you know. But uh, I'll be in the shadows, but I'll be in and out of the shadows, you know. Yeah. Well, this game's going to be out forever, so I'll I'll come back next year really strong. I think you'll have a lot of people waiting for you. I'll definitely be one of them. Thank you for your yeah. time. It's been an absolute well, thank pleasure. You, was good. You're a good interviewer, dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Guys, we will be back in a couple of weeks' time with episode four. Make sure you go and follow Julio. He has been on an absolutely amazing journey. I've got incredible levels of respect for it. But also, you guys, if you want to make these kind of trips, if you want to become a professional player, this man's advice is pretty damn solid. Until next time, thank you very much for watching Fight Talks. I'll see you next time.